Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the final installment of our Spring 2021 Broadside Reading Series curated by Purvi Shah. My name is Jenna Hamid, and I am the Programs Manager at Center for Book Arts. I'm tuning in today from Queens, New York, the traditional unceded territory of the Lenape peoples. The theme of this season series is healing futures, attending wounds, tending lineages. The Broadside Reading Series, as one of the center's longest running programs, public programs, features six writers in the spring and in the fall, collaborating with the center's community of artists to create a collection of limited edition letterpress printed broadsides. The collaboration explores the relation of text, image, and design, incorporating the artist's visual conveyance of the writer's poetry. Poet Purvi Shah curated this series with, with such grace, care, and intention, and we are truly grateful for her. She describes her curation process. The poet pairings are braids that at times come together, at times come apart, come always as they are. Collectively, they are wonders of attention, a praxis of futures, a healing. Collectively, they're an invitation to be an accomplice in awe and liberation. We are so grateful to have you all here to witness the weaving of work by Elena Rivera and Sahar Muradi, as well as artists Oswaldo Garcia and Ranza Khalifa. Oswaldo, who's coming in from Querétaro, Mexico, is our current book artist and resident and is an editor, printer, and co-founder of Gold Rain, a Mexican publisher of artist books. Ranza Khalifa is a Syrian American artist, a designer based in New York, focused on the investigation of surface and the ways in which it negotiates, protects, and betrays the human body. This program would not be possible without the support of poets and writers through the public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, as well as support from our growing global book arts community. While a donation tonight is not expected or necessary, it is certainly appreciated. And now I'll turn it over to Pravisha and the poets. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our closing fabulous reading for Healing Futures. I'm so excited you are all here today. We are going to begin with a brief somatic activity so that we can all ground and collect together and feel our presence and also wash away some of the day. Um, so feel free to get comfortable if you are sitting or standing. Anywhere you are is perfectly fine. So you're just going to take a moment and go ahead and lift your shoulders up towards your ears and then drop them Whew. and breathe out as you drop. Let's do that again a few more times. Lift your shoulders to your ears and then blow out. And one more time, lift your shoulders to your ears. And already you might feel, oh, I have a little more juice here, a little more energy, or maybe I'm actually just noticing them really tense in my neck. So we're gonna take a moment and just turn your head to the right and look over your ear and then turn back to center and then turn to the left, back to center, turn to the right, back to center, turn to the left, and back to center. And then we're gonna take our head up, back to center, down, your chin towards your neck, chest, back up. And one more time up, and then down, and down. And then let's put our shoulders back up towards our ear, this time gently and drop and let go. And feel free if you want just to shake out everything that came up, everything that there is. 
And then however you feel, feel free. Either you can take your arms and put them towards the screen, your hands, or you can put them to the sides of you, or you can bring them in close to your heart. And we will just take a moment to witness that we are here, we are present, and we are connected. Thank you again for joining this evening. We have such a treat for you with both Sahar Muradi and Elena Rivera reading. And I start with somatics to help ground us. Um, my name again is Purvi Shah. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And I am here on unceded Lenape and Canarsie territories in Brooklyn, New York. I have a wall hanging of an elephant from India behind me. Um, I'm wearing some blue sparkly earrings given to me by my friend Dimple and a blue Indian um, dress, which was given to me by my mom. And we ground with somatics because so much of our work is to restore our own humanity, to restore our presence, to restore our sense of being, particularly in the wake of colonizations, enslavement, and ongoing travesties and horrors. I also want to say happy pride, everyone, um, and also share from the A Cause for Sexual and Gender Diversity in Palestinian Society, who say, queer liberation is fundamentally tied to the dreams of Palestinian liberation, self-determination, dignity, and the end of all systems of oppression. In a settler colonial context, no clear line can be drawn with colonialism ends and patriarchal violence begins. I ground us in our bodies, in our presence, so we can feel our aliveness and celebrate it for all of who we might be and are. Sahar and Elena, also ground in these questions of freedom and suffering. And who are the architects of the suffering? Who are the architects of our freedoms? They ask these large questions and do so by weaving through forms, through their own creations of architectures, by creating a thing, a presence, a being, whether it's Elena moving through sonnets and scaffolding and reshifting form, or Sahar working in as cafes in a collaborative performance with a dancer. Both Sahar and Elena work to create their own architecture of loss and also reclamation. I'm particularly moved by one of Sahar's pieces, which is called Like Marbles We Scattered, where she recollects diaspora the traces of her Afghan family and her lineages to arriving in the United States through war and refugees and through restoring connection. In Like Marbles We Scattered, she captures and holds and presents and shares with us the sounds of her family. The sounds of her family doing the most ordinary things, which when Sahar weaves it together is extraordinary in its aliveness, in its presence. Or as the poet Rajiv Mohabir says of Sahar's work, Sahar makes sense of the fragments of memory, the broken buildings of Kabul, Mazar, and Panjshir, the innocence of childhood punctured by journey, a father's illness, losing a language, and the politics of a war uninvited. Muradi beckons you ask you how you authored, quote, coronations with the hope of freeing others, the architects of what's left, unquote. Sahar is a collaborator with sounds, with the page, with the world around and within her, not shying away from the tensions of anxiety, distress, the marks of war, and the marks of working to become free. Elena 
also is a brilliant weaver of marks. Elena, who was born in Mexico City, raised in Paris, moved throughout the United States and has called New York her home for so many years, is a wonder of the epic, who finds the epic in the ordinary, who says in conversation with Rob McLennan, quote, writing for me is the attempt to voice what is present, which is, I still don't know. It's a way out of erasure. Or as she says in a recent poem for the rest of us, quote, in a year of decomposition, who's the model for the rest of us? Elena doesn't quite offer models. She might be too humble for that, but she certainly offers some kind of instructions, an instruction in being free in watching the movement and sounds of language, in witnessing the wildness of being, a wonder in instruction. And perhaps that just wondering is freedom in itself. Or as she says in Winborn, quote, as we jettison our bones into the sea, into trenches, into the garbage the woman reached into, I get passionate about the sky noise an elderly woman reaching gravity, that crazy need to eat, all that detritus around the budding tree." End quote. Such beauty in passion, such beauty in detritus. Elena and Sahar find, as Elena says, tremendous things in strange places. And Nothing is too small for their scrutiny. And we who strive to be much larger than we are find so much to learn in both of their works. I'm so excited to have both Elena and Sahar with us tonight. And in honor of their work, I'm gonna share a couple of my poems which weave in some of the themes that they speak to and then I will pass it to Sahar. Sarasati Mark's Lineage of the Missing. I have known a grandmother and two have known me. You search for missing limb, reveal a tree with disparate pattern of branches, one side whistling, the other accordion of leaves. You expect a thinning at the top, but wonder if this tree feels terribly bruised, a woman with half her hair, a woman blistering bald sense in wild stutter. Lineage often skips a relation. You search for an ancestor. In your dreams, a daughter travels. She wakes you when you need to rise, kindles in your skin scent of the tea she is about to brew. Another journeys with you on a crowded road, haggling with the vegetable seller for a better rate. She has gotten so wise in so few years. Some mothers count off years on a ruler against a white wall, children growing shoulders and span of necks. If you could mark your unmade memories, every black wall would need altars, room now for praise. A mythical river can spawn civilizations, but can a mythical girl civilize? You tell one story and hope it survives. A young girl holds a subway door for an old Chinese man who needs a few more steps to reach. The girl says, do not mind your battered wings. The peregrine nearly became extinct, chemical singeing generations. So you move around your pain from a womb to a shoulder. You float across aerial silks, you Pacific sky. She says, now the peregrines are returning. Fury keeps a river invisible. You bruise a ventricle or shape a throat as you recover sore, a realm where every elbow has room, pain, is temporary, flight is not. You see trees shedding leaves you never saw they bore. 
You observe girls sleeping in the missing river. Shh, do not wake them. You may disturb dreams birthing. You take out your ruler and in the unseen waters notch each body growing. And finally, I'll share the poem which opens my most recent collection, Miracle Marks, The Poet Enters the Game. And it starts with this epigraph from Stephen Nekmanovich, which is, there is an old Sanskrit word, lila, which means play. Black blood of a star, bent light, or as we say, woman. Black blood of a star, bent light, or as we say, woman. Your dance has misplaced laughter and blue wrists where your troubles circle into a praise echo saint song. Miniature skirts flaring, you spy a silver flute seducing sorrows and prefer your own drum. Devotion as an alphabet without a final letter. Black blood of a star, bent light, or as we say, woman. Mira says, my marriage was a scandal. My love never was. Music coming from afar or within, and you know not. Black blood of a star, bent light, or as we say, woman. Women astonish you and then you become one. Women astonish you, and then you become one. Women astonish you, and then you become one. Thank you all for being here tonight, and I'm so thrilled to now pass it on to Sahar Muradi, and um, keep the evening going. Thank you again for being here. Thank you, Porvi. You are astonishing. Um, my name is Sahad. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, that's my daughter screaming outside. Her name is Soma. Um, I have long, dark uh, brown hair. I'm wearing a black dress. Uh, I'm wearing a gold um, hoop earring as a necklace, and it says John on it, which is the daddy word for beloved or dear. And I'm sitting in my father-in-law's library. Um, and I'm sitting on the unceded um, original land of the Lenny Lenape people in what is um, called central New Jersey today. Um, I just wanted to start by thanking CBA and Jenna, particularly, well, the whole team, uh, Devin, everyone for putting together this just so special reading series. And um, of course, I all my gratitude to poor Visha for inviting me to be part of this. Um, thank you for your beautiful, generous introduction. Um, and it's just an honor to poet beside you and to friend with you and um, to try to see the world anew with you. Um, thank you also to Elena. It's so rad to have the um, opportunity to read with you for the first time. I feel very inspired by you um, and to Oswaldo and uh, Rhonda. Um, just so cool that we get to collaborate. And Rhonda, it's been an amazing journey and I'm so grateful to you for what you created from my poem. Um, so I'm gonna start with a couple poems that think about language as Elena and I um, move between many, several. Um, and because we're tending to lineages, I thought I would open with a hazal, which is uh, an ancestral form for me, which originated in seventh century Arabia and thrives globally today. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about language as I raise my daughter 
and um, with the hope that I can raise her in my mother tongue, which is Dari, D-A-R-I, um, which is near to Farsi, uh, which is spoken in Iran, but Dari is the, uh, one of the native languages in Afghanistan. Ghazal for mothers and tongues. It may be a broken, a shrill mother tongue, but I'm raising my daughter in my ill mother tongue. Translating Sus and Nagara on the fly. Sio Safed, I'm fine, but at zebra, I'm still mother tongue. The air is English, the water too. How will you get past her gill, mother tongue? Morning and night, I call Modad. What's the word for guilt, mother or tongue? A bat is a leather butterfly, turtle, a stone frog, daddy one, English nil, mother tongue. We are writing our own kitab, you and I. Oh, the things they try to kill, mothers and tongues. Papa, climb Zina, get moon, she instructs. I'm over the matab, each sprinkle of mother tongue. Nafasim kiast, I ask. Soma Ali, she beams. In a word, my breath and my dill, a mother's tongue. And just con con continuing. Um, thoughts on language and um, preservation and also um, creating, creation. A language entirely. She notices the shamal in the trees. We call it dancing. I wonder if I could teach her language entirely in metaphor. This is a leaf yawning to the ground. You have two starfish, right and left. The clouds are playing piano again. She already gets this. Of the neighbor's umbrella on the balcony tilted, she says, how, asleep, folds her hands under her ear, head tilted. To not correct to allow the pleasure of the construction, of the gesture, how she distills. For giraffe, she runs her hand up her neck. For elephant, five fingers swing under her nose. Her economy is expansive. The same single syllable for multitudes. Ma for Madajan, Ma for Moss, for Marmite, for Cousin Mateen. We must train our ears to her tongue's subtleties. She builds by repetition, reinforces by rhyme. Soon, like enters the room. Sound to me like growling bear. Look to me like window. A wedge, approximate. So begins a life of approximation. Sorry, so begins a life of separation. In February, she says plainly under our gasps, grass, trees, and barf, like diamonds, stars, moon, and bed, like diamonds. To see one in another is to see as one another. We watch her eyes as much as her mouth. Mucher, she corrects me. I like ice cream mucher. The robot lost its eye. No, the robot is winking. Because to say is to see. The power of a tongue accelerating, revving repeatedly, of teeth marking the earth. We listen with the hunger of old eyes. Elena, I pass it to you. Um, that was so beautiful, Sahar. Really, 
Mm. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, and uh, just such a, um, I think Pervy, you create such a, a wonderful, warm, and in French, we would say chaleureux, uh, caliente atmosphere, and it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's just beautiful. And um, really want to thank Jenna and Devin for arranging and for the series, for the book arts. I love book arts, just amazing. Letterpress, all of it. It's just beautiful, wonderful work. Um, and um, I'm here reading on the unceded land of the Lenape people. And I um, think I will start uh, with uh, some older work and then move in the evening, move more to the present. So I'm gonna start with a section called Earth from my book, um, uh, Epic Series. And this is um, actually from a long poem called Unknown Land. Um, and um, it's a long poem that looks at the various elements. And from that, and from the forms in the poem, I tried to um, explore many things that I didn't understand. <laughs> So this is from the section called Earth. Behold now, the ground beneath brings only to the eyes of those who traveled across it far and wide. Nothing will be retained from them, which then they have imagined to do. Le premier mot, take the field. Le premier bruit, hold still. Quelle est la forme, hold the needle still. Quelle est la ligne, make the mark. Quelle est la phrase, even more painterly. À la recherche d'un mot, enter the whole. Cette contradiction in a composition. Le premier mot, lines converge. Le précipice, that very point. At the epigean, divisions along racial, sexual, moralistic, and intellectual lines. A forest of factories, so that whatever side we're on, we stand stagnating. Any little bit will do to pull the rest through. This clogged surface, slide right in. This cavity filled with noise, exfoliated. This lattice of words, tellement fragile. This agitated landscape, built by accretion. This opening, at the top, quel est le mot that had once been so beautiful? The light is very strange. <laughs> um, one can be so careful that one can become a mere ghost. Hunters are in the forest go in and wear red, or a handful of bones. Devils are in the desert, go in and bear yellow. The heart is taken out as if it were a splinter and one in one sweeping gesture. Our terrain trembled, trampled by so many boots. Left, 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 right, left the noises in the darkness of the night, left, 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 right, left, the groans of the wounded, left, left, 
left, right, left, filled with their cries, left, 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 right, left. What happened once we left the cell though is another story, the other side of the window, a book that tells the secret about life in North America. Which coast are you willing to enter embedded in rock? One person's struggle illuminates the rest. Light kept trying to force its way in, hide in another name, though I was practically blindfolded, hide deep inside. To let the senses roam unfettered, unrestrained by pieces of furniture, but I am immured in this century like a fly in a bog, a phrase fixated, repeated over and over, this grasping at spongy ground, poorly drained, surrounded by sedges. A little girl plays a board game. Looking back at the last pages, at where she had been, I taste the salt which falls like pillars down my cheeks, this touch, this is not what I had in mind. My faiblesse, the axis of how I happened to perceive my earthly existence, de femme. Humbled by my predicament, that of being thrown around, for example, lifted by his strength and finding myself landed in the other room, I decided to grow up before my time until I realized that my project had always been horizontal, an alien in a strange land. Sahara. Wow, Lena, I want to stay in your strange land. Um, lattice of words continue. Um, oh. Note breaths. One, noting the bud of the hibiscus whose clawed collar signals its wealth. Two, when it thunders. Can you hear that? It's thundering if I said that. <laughs> wow. When it thunders nightly, where to put one's weight, eyes, tongue, Yemen, Yangon, Minnesota. Three, your quiet becomes pointed, a blade against your neighbor's skin. Four, at the hospital, the spread of magazines, traveler economist Marie Claire, quote, what's next for fashion, quote, the puzzle of political Islam, the way the world worlds, layers, buries. Five, the mother of all bombs, misread as bodies. Six, language as an anchor in the white water, in the cascade. Seven, when the body says it cannot anymore, it cannot another, but something else insists. The body, however, and still, the body beneath the insistence surrenders. So with the past, what will not leave until it is seen, swallowed, passed through. History insists itself. Eight, the hibiscus is native to tropical Africa. Its calyx is crushed into tea and juice, is beaten into jelly its fibers coiled into rope. Nine, language as please, as please stop, as pleasing, as pleasant, aspirational, aspire, inspire, expire, inspire. Um, this is 
um, like the first poem I wrote after I gave birth and it's for my daughter, um, though not just about her. The Great Green Field. Here is the great green field where at last I can remove the high heel of language. Let the body supple in its meaning, her mouth my guide. It's the mouth I live for that lives for me. Her wail that shatters wild, small heart beasting out of cage, my animal wonder every day. And if she purpled awake, not from my legs, but from the soft, medicated sheet of men, and if my mouth sealed with each breaking, each violent crashing of the news, and if the year was marked by the believers and the disbelievers, and if I believe, will no one believe in the name of God he thrust into me, and if in her buto tender hands I hang, shame on language that meets me, pulverizes me in public, revels in the republic for whom I was not natural, so naturalized me, makes of her miracle a mockery, life before life, after which islands better eaten by the sea, say, I see you, dare daughter, hear you against all belief, brave this thin earth devolving in the jaws, I dream you perfectly personed, in body, embodied, least secret to yourself, the most sacred, you scare them all free. And this is an older poem um, that I actually wrote many years ago for dur during the Guantanamo detentions at the height of the Guantanamo detentions, but I'd like to read it tonight. And um, I think sort of re recasting it still thinking about survival, still thinking about sort of um, imprisonment, um, but, but for today, not that, not that Guantanamo is over. 12 step cell. One, start with the palms of your hands, find the faintest branch. Two, Take your fourth fingers, touch them to your thumbs, feel how unused they are. Three, remember the small of your lip where your breath gathers, it still gathers. Five, do not think of your baby. Six, study your nails, how they return consistently, how the body affirms itself consistently. Seven, trace your navel, your nipple, the net of your manhood. These are your beginnings. Eight, reckon your blinking. How many per minute? How many per hour? Did you ever think how many times in your life and empty of your will? That is what your father meant by God. Nine, do not think of your father. Ten, See the veins on the backs of your hands and the alleys of your arms. No city moves as fast. 11, remember your body in the ocean, rising and falling, rising and falling, being taken against yourself, being submerged, removed from the sun, far from sound. Remember the panic? Remember how the ocean did not panic? 12, feel the hollow of your foot, the small roof it makes, a tunnel for the ants, those beads of dedication. They know nothing of leaving, of closing the sail. Lower your gaze. Um, can I, I'm just gonna, I, I, I wanted to squeeze this. <laughs> I'm gonna stop after this, but um, I, I, I misread my own outline. Um, I just wanna finish this section with, um, or this part with um, uh, the poem that is part of the broadside, that makes the broadside, which is made by Rhonda beautifully. Um, this is called Washi, 
slash was she and was she in Dari means wild or savage and was she is the English phrase English language phrase was she statement or question um, and it's based on a uh, personal and political trauma was she was she she was washi. I told her you are like your motherland, a wilderness, needs a belt, laid down two white hotel towels, took her into the tub to wudu the boys out of her mouth, pointed her nipples toward Qibla, wiped clean her intention to perform ruku as if carrying a glass of chai on her back, fold at the knees, palms to the ground, tucked her soles under her astaghfirullah used country. In my used country, I felt his teeth circle as a mosquito, the black mystery. He placed my right hand over my wrong stain, said he was bringing me home, offered me a suite with a lock, a key in the shape of a brother, perhaps 22 years old, my body pure as a glass table. He spilled, was she? my boss on my back at night came easy as a fly to post conflict faithfully used my country elena whoosh. Uh, so wow. <laughs> I, I have no words. <laughs> it's just, just uh, taking in, absorbing your words. Um, I'm going to read uh, just a couple of little short things. One, because of Purvi's threshold theme. Um, so just a couple of short things from my uh, another book called The Perforated Map. Forced to face oneself, still a bright seed, just as real, dans n'importe quelle langue. We have to find it, the threshold. When it comes, bewildered by possible obscurity, the everyday apocalypse. Um, and this was a, a piece that I wrote, this was a little bit before, um, the pandemic, I was um, looking at a drawing of a hand by Dürer and thinking about um, the, the, the wall that was wanting to be built to keep immigrants out of the country and uh, so this, um, this poem comes from that time. And it's called Hand Renditions. Hand hangs down, one finger hidden. Drewer's hand hangs, drops down, solitary, heavy, empty, not reaching out to anyone. Fustigate myself for it often enough. A pencil squeezed between fingers, lead shades shape the study of the broken. Heaving body, after hearing of the deported, Fabiola, Pili, Francisco, Marizia, Pablo, Matteo, Maynor, Osman, Vladimir, Angel, Gabriel, Jesus, Luis, Jimena, Kenya, Estefani, Yata, Chiazolu, Mahai, Yona, Jose, Neli. Faint whistle blows in the heart. 
Thin maples sway in the dense city streets. Bodies swirl in the sea or howl in air-conditioned rooms. Activists carry the message of shadows behind blistering walls where no hands reach because at its origin, a flight from, from terror, which tests the cells of being. And um, a sonnet from my book of sonnets, Scaffolding. October 8th, crossed out, revised, July 8th. Love, all these sonnets about missing, missing. What about love, amor, amour, escucha, listen, écoute. We must have our différence in order to love, to notice what is there how Joyce wrote of our lusting, raging bodies. If you don't feel it, then pretend for God's sake. For the woman, love is a matter of touch. Molly's yearning, her yes, her consolation. Remember the mind is full of old snowman and arguments are played on winter wounds. Underwent tempests, toyed with them, restated them, saw beauty in the brave blue tragedy, and let it feed my exposed lopsided face. I hear the zeal of the sonnet, escucha. Sahar. Oh, Elena, so beautiful. I'm so in awe of how much you can pack and say with, with word, with, a, with like a fragment. Um, so spacious, so rippling, rippling. Um, thank, you. thank you. I will just um, close with some um, a poem and some maybe meditations on uh, loss since um, that is also in the room with us and outside and this year, thinking of all the losses that, um, you know, by disease, by violence, by um, in, in all its manifestations. So I, um, I start with a very short poem called um, Padar Jahan. Padad is father in Dari, and um, actually the poem refers also to, to the word John, which is the one I'm, I'm wearing, which means dear. So my father would um, call me John of Padad, which means dear of father. And I would call him Padad John, which is dear father. Um, and the, the other word in the poem is Jahan, which is the word for world. Um, and my father passed um, in 2016. Padad Jahan. He is not here, was here, was just here, was just a bloom of eyes darkening. I held some once, once a padad John. I had a one say John a padad once. Someone to some all. Jahan a padad. Padad Jahan. And um, I'm just going to read a little from some journals. They're, they're kind of journals that um, maybe they, they will pass the poetry. <laughs> Um, and I'll skip around for time. In my mind, I trace your bony cheek, two bumps of earlobe, 
God is as close as the soft of the ear. Photographs erupt, the long space in my eyes. And she is soft, quaking, reliving the hospital. The morning, night was dark, but she misses the darkness, even the cold cut of your words. You were cold. I rubbed your feet under the sky blue blanket, six blankets, the oval of your mouth drying. We took turns, the yellow sponge, your teeth in the styrofoam cup. You that what, that once, that long, that should forever, you what, you, my, irrelevant, all. I keep coming back faithfully to empty. Why do we blush before death? It's true, I saw you shy. Today, December 3rd, I'm wearing you, your long shirt and vest, Peran Waskat. The last night we were together, you dressed in the same traditional clothes, going home sometime tomorrow. It hung on you, bones talking out of turn. Today you were born legally, formally, symbolically, not your true calendar. Here is a candle I place on my dining table, gardenia scented. It overtakes the room. And why can't the image not be the hospital? Why couldn't your mouth close that she wrapped you with gauze, so much white gauze and so tightly, forcefully around your chin, a child again? She said custom, but was it just like that? Had you been and then suddenly not? Was that your boat untethered? And she unlocked your hands. Your hands were yours at last, your hands in unison writing unclocked by accident. Was it you or wasn't it? The jaw locking. Who was it who wasn't? Signs empty. Wore your clothes today to near you, to approximate the shade of your ear. I was almost there. Yes, I was there in the hollow. It's a cold wind at my back constant, a kind of draft, severed again, as if Afghanistan, Dari, the stories, poetry, as if every stream of news, every mud brick of history, ours, is no longer mine. The family trees, the notes, the table now with a missing leg, all the scraps, the papers, the recordings, the notes, your letters I could not read, Years deciphering, our numbers beginning with cipher, the oval of your mouth, the stacks and stacks and unfinished and your voice like a harbor. Days with Mwadad occupying the space together and differently, as if it's a single space, as if we are singular people. Tried praying again, something of consistency, of beyond human, of care, guidance of nearing you. Your face is receding behind the ordinary day. Your dentured smile from afar, all the stars invisible to our small eyes. And where are you over me, beside me in a pattern of light on the white wall? Where do you reside exactly? Any moment rises up, a well, a wave, an unfathomable plunge. No one knows, no one knows exactly you cut out of. Your face hurts to know from the outside, from a page, a glass that keeps the secret of its own shattering. So the new month and the quaking your face appears, the faintness of your voice. You are building a kite, consumed in focus. How to repair the hole in the tissue paper. You paste a piece over a piece and let go. It holds until the wind.
Thank you, Elena. Mm. Just want to um, thank thank Pervy for bringing Sahara and I uh, together for this reading. I'm I'm really really honored to be reading with you. Um, this um, 2020, <laughs> I've um, was doing a collaboration with a poet in um, Wales and we were writing poems back and forth for each month and um, one and um, one of the months is the one that Oswaldo made such a beautiful um, if you haven't seen it you have to see it it's just a beautiful broadside um, but I thought I'd start uh, earlier in the year. Uh, this was before, well, I'll let you get <laughs> understand that. Um, this is starting with February. I was on my way back from uh, some time at uh, McDowell. February. Back again from snow-covered arched alleys of pine and birch to jackhammers breaking pavement, whipping up a rough kind of time. Knots we hold in our stomach just because we desired so chin up that sweet turn has transformed into a rod to punish inside, outside. See me now, the frog just about to jump into the pond, look, have I made a splash, 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 plop, here's the flash. In the pan I set up, tied me up, then scrambled in different directions. I say no in my mind and yes with my tired vocal cords. Poor Tom, waiting at South Station, about to embark on a new novel eating cold bacon. The Palestinian actress and a restless spirit pacing back and forth. Poor heart, train pulling out of the station. Did we get the right ticket? Printing them out because we couldn't quite trust our cell phones, which we clutched at. We became close for a day, sharing the ride with time and impatience on our way to, the, to where those who have made the numbers compose comfort. The last experience disappears with the sound of steel and rubber, countryside passing, more buildings appearing, a return to chopped up time, and the next appointment where a woman will prod this time and will wonder together if it was all worth it, this measuring of the flesh. I'll wear my yellow vest and let you guess to the kind I am referring to. I'm a cold, and you, my ticket, will lead me to night and day, beginning again. Mars, or as we say in English, March. <laughs> How to write of the present, daylight savings times thrust forward new light, this season now pandemic. Stillness descends, city crocus bloom, daffodils between empty towers. Some still work, having to. Having to move forward this month, ruled by Aries in the Western canon. Social distancing dilates, isolates. And it's only been one week, he said, laughing. Third month, year tw 2020. Stymied as God extends the days. Self-isolation and soon in lockdown as the number of cases in New York rise, the propulsion of that rhythm forward. The population acclimates to crisis, city birds chirp, trees burgeon, high-tech trills and sirens fill the air. Sirens, sirens. July, version two. 
Fragrant amber summer sun, surface anticipation in season, tethered by calamity. I hear the notes we are in this country, invisible ghosts, towering echoes, the border made, high rise history, fireworks encrust and most birds flee, but I'm here framed. And I thought I would end um, with October, skipping over the one um, that was made as a broadside to let you discover that for yourself. <laughs> so October. <laughs> what about dawn drops? turn day into a volatile companion, a thrush shakes in the rain, rubbed, swept up, the art of looking forward to form, rustling leaves, crackle, raucous in the wind, rain, a helicopter roams in Harlem skies, sigh, history in miniature, hidden from ourselves, shaped by four walls, the we body is lost, lopped, connections ephemeral, the curves chromatic, darkness approaches, ghosts hide, bumping against limits, a turbulent evening already, October over here, producing tempest inside the mind, must study ourselves at night. A child remains in the exchange. What did happen to being with others? A family of raccoons gives relief in Riverside Park, an attraction where humans melt the majesty of being in place, yellow, golden, aesthetic leaves fall, an autumn night. Um, that was well, little. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna share. No. So I um, uh, I uh, started uh, uh, thinking about a selection of photographs that I could use for the broadside with Elena, and uh, at first I thought that uh, that maybe it, it could be good to use uh, a random selection of many images uh, because, because it was for me like a very powerful piece, uh, but also it was like something that, that applied to, to the year and the times that we all were, were living. But at the end, because of a design decision, I thought that this was uh, a better image for the for the broadside, so um, because uh, well, I think that maybe the other solution could could be worked because at the end the seal screen ink um, worked very well uh, at the front of the paper. Uh, I I used. Uh, I use the technique of cyanotype that it is like um, it is a technique that combines the light of the sun or UV light with a combination of chemicals. So it gets printed in the in the surface of paper, stone, clothes, and many things. And uh, it also has uh, this characteristic blue but it has also some other other blues. And 
At first I was doing it uh, with the light of the sun, but after that, I thought that it was going to be very difficult because we have uh, some sunny days, but also some very cloudy days. And a friend of mine told me about his, uh, he, he has a steel spring studio. So he told me about this, this big machine. And at the end, it was like making bread or something like that, because I could work like from the morning to late night, like at 11 p.m. or something like that. And I just have to wait like seven minutes to uh, to put one of them and then another one. And um, so I, I wanted all of them to be different. Uh, I don't know if if everything is is on the screen. I think it's not. I don't know. But um, well, I, I think it, it was um, the image is it's like a ghost city. I'm gonna reduce it because I think it's not working. Oh, sorry. And and it comes from a. Um, And it is an image from the highlight of, of New York that I took in 2018, but it was um, it was a special moment because everything was like in calm and um, the advertisement that it was really big, it was also white. So I think that it was like a special moment to do that photo and also on film. And um, where is it? And also uh, a detail, it's that the image is the negative of the, of the photo because with that, the image, uh, it's enriched with some more tones of blue. And um, I don't know, I, I thought that it was uh, like a powerful, uh, Image with the combination of the technique to 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 give um, I don't know a more powerful message to Elena's piece. And I know that's it. We talk a lot, uh, Elena and me. We, we talk a lot, and it was really delightful to work to work. Um, and uh, I really liked the result. I'm I'm very. Um, I'm very grateful with, with the center and I'm also I, I have um have a lot of joy and I want that uh, all of you see it because I, I have it here in Mexico but I'm gonna send them soon so well that's that's it and also it was a challenge to print 100 and some more with this technique but I I have discovered with the time that I like the big process of all these, these challenges in art. And so I enjoy it a lot. And uh, many thanks, Jenna, Liz, Purvi, Elena, everyone, Sara, uh, for the opportunity. And now it's Rhonda. Hi, everyone. I'm joining you from my home studio. I'm excited to have this opportunity to share my design process. Um, so I was really captivated with the way Sahar plays with words across multiple languages and the italicized words um, 
in the poem that I made um, the broadside of uh, really stood out to me um, and were familiar to me um, because they were commonly used in day-to-day -day language within the multicultural immigrant Muslim community that I grew up within in um, New York. And so the in intimacy of these words juxtapose with um, washi, a word entirely unfamiliar to me became the starting point uh, for my design. Um, but after I spoke with Sahar, I found out that uh, the word was not as unfamiliar as I thought it, it was originally. Um, as Sahar just said, washi in um, Dari means wild or savage. And um, Dari is um, Sahar's native tongue. And in Arabic, my native tongue, uh, wahish means monstrous. So um, this really got me thinking about how Dari and Arabic share a common script um, despite belonging to entirely different language families. Um, so I was thinking about the 11th century master calligraphers of Baghdad and to them script was sacred, an entire universe of meaning could be extrapolated from a single letter. And then um, to the Hrofuya artists of the late 20th century, letters could be stripped um, of their linguistic significance to create a new meaning while asserting a visual heritage independent of the Western canon. Um, so I'd like to show you a couple of works that inspired me that I turned to throughout this whole process. Um, this is a Deftar or artist book by Karim Muzan, um, which is influenced uh, by the calligraphy tradition as well as the Harufia movement. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at graphic design coming out of Iran, and I love this, uh, this series of posters um, inspired by Iranian poetry. And I also found love with the work of this um, artist and graphic designer, and I just love the references to the letters and um, so yeah, so in, in creating uh, this broadside, I'm really paying homage to the uh, standalone letter, both in its pure and abstracted forms. I also um, referenced this piece of silk, which I marbled a couple years ago for color and organic shapes. Uh, for the fill, I created this pattern um, combining elements from the Arabic alphabet and um, elements from the piece of fabric I just showed you. And um, it was a really exciting opportunity to work with metal type at the Center for Book Arts for the first time. And it actually, I'm so glad you read the poem because in arranging this type, I feel like I read the poem to myself a thousand times. <laughs> and I was just so curious as to how you would read it. Um, and here we have the final print. And I think we're opening for questions now. Well, I think first, can we just actually give a round of applause to Ola and Oswaldo? Um, what beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work you created. Um, it's such a joy to see how you brought in lineages, challenge, um, and I think particularly in this time period, the work of collaboration is something so special in terms of, again, restoring our connection. So thank you, thank you for your beautiful work. And I'm gonna actually pass it over. We didn't have any questions in the chat. So I'll pass it over to Sahar um, and Elena to close us out with a couple of poems. Wow, that's so beautiful. It was so wonderful hearing you each speak about your process and to see it. Like I just saw the finished product and 
um, Rhonda and I talked a little bit, but just to, to hear you each um, speak in detail and to even see the type. And yeah, I'm just um, so grateful that we got to collaborate for these pairs, these braids. Um, yeah, and it really had me thinking um, about language and image, but also, yeah, like texture, color, type, like, um, yeah, I, I'm just really, I'm just very, very moved. Um, thank you. I will, um, I'm actually not sure what to read, so I'm just going to read what's in front of me. <laughs> um, I guess I, I will still, I'll just close continuing thinking about language since it's, it's in the room um, in so many ways. Um, so the, this is called My Neighbor's Shadow. Um, I'm, I'm having a very hard time writing to this moment, but um, so that was really, I, I really appreciated hearing some of the, your work, Elena, that spoke directly to this moment. Uh, I felt very inspired by that. Um, I'm, so this is an attempt to like, just thinking about um, the word neighbor and like who our neighbors are today and thinking about neighbor, you know, in light of like all everything politically and, and, and the divisiveness and, and all of that. And also um, thinking of um, the word shadow um, in Fars in Dedi, the word for neighbor is hamsaya. Ham means together or with, and saya means shadow. So it's shared shadow. And, I, and I'm thinking too of, in terms of like the um, United States history and like the in, inherited shadows of our past, you know, of, of racism, of military occupation. So anyway, the poem, doesn't go there in enough, but it's an attempt. My neighbor's shadow. My neighbor's shadow falls on my body. My neighbor's shadow touches my body. My neighbor's shadow looks at my body. There is a little land between us, an isthmus. The body of my neighbor's shadow keeps mine. Between us, the fence grows teeth. Is that my body, my neighbor cut, reaching for the fruit? I try to return my neighbor his shadow, only it saturates the soil. Does my neighbor taste it in the flesh? They are gleaming now, the pickets. My shadow reaches his land. My neighbor reaches for my body, demands I swallow his shadow. It reeks of all the branches. My shadow neighbors my neighbor's shadow. My neighbor's body blocks the light and lengthens our shadows. And I'll close with, um, this poem called Words by Which to Tell Time. Um, so just more language. <laughs> okay. Soul, peace, a word that ends silently, a word whose feet never touch the ground. Siu asht sol. 38 years, not unlike Siu Ashk Saul, 30 tears old. Bewa, widow, could be Be without, Wa, and, without and, without her and, her conjunction, the coincidence of two heavenly bodies at the same celestial longitude. Bewa, without her heavenly half. Two million bewa, two million halves in heaven. Salah, weapon, so near soul, 
how one might mistake one for the other, as in drone for lull. Bomb, a word that ends silently, a word whose feet here never touch the ground. Bomb, a word with a tail in another country, a tail that lands clearly, firmly, a sound that splits their mouths. Thank you so much for this opportunity and this gathering and this artistry together. I pass it final, last pass to Elaine. Yes. Okay. So, Sahar, thank you. Mamanda and Oswaldo. It's really been a such a pleasure. Purvi Shah. Mwah. <laughs> So this one is called For the Rest of Us. In the global direction, except that it has no meaning, belief of we think we are what we are witnessing today. It would be a mistake. The New York Times described the individual as lost, loss of memory, a child's act of ma magical thinking. In a year of decomposition, who's the model for the rest of us? Dying, dying at an alarming rate in solitary abandoned streets, fragmented into hardly dare imagine. We're drifting like Crusoe, hardly, struck by the word breathing, disoriented, and the compass contaminated by failure, hardly. And um, I have two I'm trying to decide. <laughs> Well, I think I will end on this one. It's um, because it ends on a poem inspired by a painting. And I must say that during these times, writing, poets, uh, photographers, musicians, artists of all shapes, sizes, and colors, books, everything, it has been so necessary, I think. And it just opens our minds and our hearts and our beings to keep us on the ground. <laughs> so, so this is after painting. It's called May Sun. After Sonia Sekula's The Voyage, 1956. Travels majestic views last as long as an orchid. Under the sun, memory thirsts for confluence, only troubled by geometric roadmaps that travel forward with an image stuck in my mind. Lines in another language forgotten by the studied one, makes holes, sends memories underground not able to look forward while I stood on the boat that brought me to a brand new country. How could I know it would erase my past? The one I once lived. Perhaps lines touch, thoughts cut up into pieces of blues, purples, even orange. I scratched my way making marks a suitcase in hand, my heart full of lines, then turned my back on it and walked away. A sun memory, inconsolable, intuits the irony of it all. The world and its weather patterns remembers conflux. Everyday body becomes 
and members outside meet. A sign travels forward. I shelved the rest in the wind. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pervy, our, our gracious hostess. Thank you. Thank you, Elena, Sahar, Rhonda, Oswaldo. And I want to take a moment and if everyone can just applaud Jenna and Devin from the Center of, for Book Arts. Um, this work would not be possible. This space would not be possible. The Center for Book Arts helps us visualize and dream into the impossible um, with something that is actually physical. It helps us imagine the space of freedom in a very concrete way. And that work would not be possible without the actual labor of the people who work at the Center for Book Arts. So thank you so much, Jenna and Devin, for helping to curate um, this whole series, for helping in all the ways you do, coordinating and making space for our dreams to become real. And thank you all, everyone who came here tonight. Um, you also make the space what it is. You make the space alive and your presence is necessary for our dreams to also become real as well. The Center for Book Arts will be back in the fall with another curated reading series. Um, there will be another fabulous curator and I'm gonna leave you in suspense in terms of who that is, but just know um, that person is amazing. And um, there will be more programs that the Center for Book Arts is doing in the meantime, but there will be another reading series in the fall. Please check out all of the readings in the Healing Futures series. Um, everyone has been stunning in so many ways. All the broadsides are incredible. And it is such a gift to be in community and connection with you all. Thank you for being here tonight. And thank you, Purvi. We can't thank you enough. We're so grateful for you and curating the space. My joy. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Everyone.